Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I'm a enthusiast of tractors and heavy machinery. And just like with any sports team, everyone's got their favorite. The same thing goes with equipment manufacturers. And you've got Caterpillar, John Deere, Alice Chalmers, Komatsu, many other brands. And my favorite just happens to be International Harvester. International Harvester is well known for their agricultural tractors, their trucks, semis, even the Scout, but they're lesser known for their construction equipment. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today and tell the story of the International Harvester Pay Line and Construction Equipment Division. There's a lot of misinformation out there about IH construction equipment, and many don't know that at one time International Harvester was number three behind Caterpillar and Komatsu in the world's leading construction equipment manufacturers. Some say that Case Construction Equipment and IH were merged. This is completely untrue. JI Case and IH Construction Equipment are completely unrelated. Some say you can't get parts for IH Construction Equipment. This is also untrue, although it isn't as easy as walking into your local dealer these days. I'll cover finding parts in a future video. For now, I'm going to talk about the history of the International Harvester Construction and Industrial Equipment. If you're interested in learning more on this subject, there are two great books. Payline by Oscar Will, or International Harvester Huff and Dresser by Roger Amato. There are some great books that go in a lot further detail than I can go to in this video. In the 1830s, a young man named Cyrus McCormick and his father worked on building a horse-drawn reaper in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. In 1934, Cyrus patented his machine and is credited to be the inventor of the first successful mechanical reaper. He called it the Virginia Reaper. A brilliant businessman, Cyrus McCormick pioneered many sales methods still used today, such as offering a warranty, selling machines on credit, and franchising dealers. In 1847, Cyrus moved his business to Chicago, Illinois, to take advantage of the railroads for shipping and to be closer to the Midwest where the greatest sales were. By the mid-1800s, competition was fierce. Stolen patents, sabotage, theft, and even violence over selling harvesting equipment. This is what became known as the Harvester Wars. In 1871, most of the McCormick's factories were lost in the Great Chicago Fire. It was a huge loss, but they were rebuilt. By the late 1800s, mergers were discussed. And in 1902, it was decided that McCormick, Deering, and four smaller reaper manufacturers would merge to create the International Harvester Company. By 1908, International Harvester had gotten into the tractor business, selling large tractors known as the Titan and Mogul. People began using these ag tractors in road building jobs like pulling graders and rollers. IH was also building stationary engines. By the 1920s, IH had smaller tractors, like the 1020, and introducing the Farmall in 1924. These smaller tractors were the perfect starting point to be converted into specialty machines. Many manufacturers would build attachments for them such as front-mounted buckets, or disassemble the tractor and turn it into, into a self-propelled roller or grader. In the 1920s, companies like Traxxon built crawler conversions for wheeled tractors, and in the 1930s, IH decided to make their own track tractor. They named it the Track Tractor. Caterpillar sued IH, and after 14 years of litigation, a settlement was reached. IH had to pay Caterpillar $6 million. Meanwhile, a young engineer named Frank G. Huff, while working at Blair Manufacturing, was designing hydraulic attachments for tractors. The Blair hydraulic digger was made to fit many manufacturers of tractors and was the first hydraulic front end loader attachment. Frank Huff purchased the Blair Manufacturing Company in 1931 and in 1933 changed the name to the Frank G. Huff Company. Huff moved to Libertyville, Illinois and built a factory large enough to manufacture their own products rather than just design and sell them. With new tractor designs constantly changing, it was very difficult to keep designing new mounting and attaching hardware for all the different makes and models. In 1939, Huff released its first integrated wheel loader, known as the Huff HS for Huff Small, the granddaddy of all wheel loaders. These purpose-built loaders were called payloaders a name that would be synonymous with the Huff and wheel loaders in general. A couple years later, the Huff HL, or Huff Large, was released and capable of handling one cubic yard of material. 
Since 1904, industrial engines have been built by International Harvester Company, starting with large flywheel, single-cylinder gasoline engines. As time went on, the engines grew. Larger, more cylinders were added, kerosene fuel became an option, and diesel power became available. IH used a unique system of starting the diesel engines using a compression release valve and a carburetor to allow the engine to start on gasoline and be switched to diesel. This eliminated the need for a pony engine for starting or the need for very powerful batteries which weren't available at the time. This gasoline start diesel engine remained in use until around 1956 when IH went to a direct start diesel engine. IH sold these engines to many other manufacturers such as Adams and Galleon to power self-propelled graders, also with stationary power to run sawmills and rock crushers. International Harvester contributed to the war effort for World War II, providing crawler tractors, tanks, trucks, torpedoes, and much more. In 1944, the company was reorganized and the Industrial Power Division of International Harvester was created specifically for construction equipment and industrial purposes. The chairman of the board, Fowler McCormick, announced his goal of overtaking Caterpillar in heavy equipment sales volume. In 1945, the Industrial Power Division of International Harvester was moved to Melrose Park, Illinois, into the former Buick Aircraft Engine Factory. The new facility was used mainly for crawler tractor and diesel engine production. In 1947, International Harvester released the new TD-24 crawler tractor. The size of a Caterpillar D8, the TD-24 was slightly heavier and featured a unique planetary steering system that allowed the inside track to be powered during a turn. This was a brilliant concept, however it was rushed into production without adequate testing. The initial design was a failure, resulting in a redesign and recalling all early TD-24 tractors. This was a huge black eye to the company and hurt their crawler reputation for years to come. Companies such as Busiris Erie, Heil, Carco, Isaacson, Huff, Draught, and Holt sometimes built aftermarket attachments for IH and other brands of machinery. Over the years, IH picked up some of these designs and purchased the design manufacturing rights to produce them as OEM installed attachments. In some cases, such as scrapers, IH converted an existing pull scraper design into a powered scraper by adding an IH powertrain to the front in place of the front axle and tow bar. By the early 1950s, the Frank G. Huff Company in Libertyville, Illinois, was building a revolutionary and cutting-edge designs of wheel loaders, far ahead of the competition. Advanced features such as torque converters, planetary axles, Z-bar loader linkage, and power shift transmissions were available. Huff added unique and specialized equipment to their lineup, such as the pay mover, used to push train cars and later aircraft. In 1952, International Harvester purchased the Frank G. Huff Company, this put them far ahead of any competition in the loader market and expanded their product lines. It was decided that Huff Division of IH would be kept as a separate division and not integrated into IH Industrial Power Division. This idea had its drawbacks, as many inefficiencies, duplication of products, and other issues with dealer networks were caused by keeping the division separate. With such a diverse line of equipment marketed to construction equipment, in 1956 the Industrial Power Division was renamed Construction Equipment Division. The same year the pay hauler was released as a new type of off-highway dump truck. This line of pay hauler trucks would go on to be very successful and would be built long after IH was gone. The pay hauler design would be purchased by a group of employees and management forming the Pay Hauler Corporation in 1981, then purchased by Terex in 1998 and produced until 2006. In 1958, IH began updating the entire crawler tractor line, getting away from the gasoline start diesels and going to direct start diesel engines, adding power shift transmission options, integral frames for track loaders and more. The model numbering was also changed. The TD-14 became the TD-15, the TD-18 became the TD-20, the TD-24 became the TD-25. By the late 1950s, IH was cooking up an even bigger crawler to compete with the Caterpillar D9. But rather than building a larger tractor, IH decided to use many parts from a TD-25 and build a similar size machine, but with more power, resulting in a more powerful machine than the TD-25, but more nimble than a D9. Not to mention the cost savings of not having to design as many new parts. Unfortunately, the TD-30, as it was be called, was rushed into production in 1962 without adequate testing. 
Early sales were good, but in the field, drivetrain failures plagued the TD-30. By the time the TD-30 was discontinued in 1967, it was a good machine, but it was too late. The IH crawler reputation had yet another black eye. By 1959, the Huff Paymover had found a niche market as an aircraft tug and pushback tractor. These successful machines can still be found working at airports in the U.S. as well as abroad. When the IH Farm Equipment Division was looking to build a four-wheel drive tractor to compete with John Deere's 8010 tractor, they went to the Huff Division for help. Huff developed the IH 4300 Ag Tractor. Only about 45 were built because it was expensive and sort of a bastard child of the Farm Equipment Division. But it was IH's first step into the four-wheel drive agricultural tractors. In the early 1960s, Huff introduced wheel loaders with an articulating frame. This led to a stronger and more maneuverable machine. The larger payloaders were offered in a paid dozer. This was a large wheeled dozer, often used for pushing scrapers. In 1965, a joint venture between International Harvester and Komatsu was formed, named Kimco, Komatsu International Manufacturing Company. This 50-50 venture led to IH Huff's designed loaders being sold internationally as Komatsu. The smaller IH 500 series loaders, the 510, the 515 and the 520 payloaders were later built in Japan by Kimco, as well as the IH-284 Ag Tractor, IH-84 series four-wheel drive front axles, and other equipment. This venture lasted until 1982, when Komatsu would buy IH's 50% share in Kimco. In 1966, International Harvester began merging its independently operated Huff Division into the Construction Equipment Division, and by 1972, all construction equipment fell under one name of Payline. The Payline Group of International Harvester was headquartered at the original Frank G. Huff Company building in Libertyville, Illinois. By the early 1960s, hydraulic excavators were catching on and IH wanted in on it. In July 1970, IH acquired a 51% controlling interest in a French excavator manufacturer called the Yumbo. Yumbo produced both rubber tire and crawler type excavators. At the American Mining Congress in 1971, International released the new 580 payloader. The 580 held the record of largest wheel loader in the world. With an 18 cubic yard bucket weighing 125 tons, it was a truly mammoth machine. In 1972, Huta Stalowa Wola of Poland licensed the rights to produce IH payloaders for the European market. In 1975, a new plant was opened in Gulfport, Mississippi to produce international loader backhoes and IH industrial loader tractors. The late 1970s were an exciting time for new IH products. International had finally standardized their model designations, consolidated their construction and industrial resources, and had some much needed updates to the lineup. The 200 series backhoes had a full line from the 240A to the 280A. The new 500 series payloaders from the 500 to the massive 580 the new 600 series excavators from 620 to 650, and even the 400 series scrapers. With major financial losses in the payline division in 1976, IH began looking to sell the division. R&D money for new products was halted. International Harvester as a whole was restructured in 1977 into five business groups, agricultural equipment, payline, trucks, solar, and components group, and a new CEO, Archie McCardle, was recruited from Xerox. During the early 1980s, International Harvester was feeling the crunch of high interest rates, as high as 21%, mounting debt, labor strikes, and a slumping economy. IH finally acknowledged their troubles publicly and began selling off assets to remain solvent. Over the next few years, IH would sell off axle and transmission designs, tractor designs, and whole divisions. In 1981, IH also sold its highly profitable solar gas turbine division to Caterpillar for $505 million. In early 1982, IH sold its interest in Kimco, Komatsu International Manufacturing Company, to Komatsu for $52 million. The popular Cub Cadet Lawn and Garden line was sold to MTD, or Modern Tool and Die. Dana Corporation bought many IH axle and transmission designs. The Paymover designs were sold off to Ingersoll. In 1982, a group of IH employees came together and purchased the Payhauler design and spun off the Payhauler Corporation. This profitable venture continued to produce IH-designed 350 Payhauler 
and refurbish old pay haulers into the late 90s when Pay Hauler Corporation was purchased by Terex. In 2003, the remains were sold to Caterpillar. In 1982, IH sold his controlling interest in Yumbo excavators back to the employees of Yumbo. Yumbo was eventually sold to a Japanese firm, Furukawa. Yumbo excavators continued to be sold for a short time under the Dresser name, but by the late 1980s, Dresser excavators were rebadged Komatsu machines. August 26, 1982, International Harvester announced the sale of its Payline Construction Equipment Division to Dresser Industries of Dallas. With IH Payline assets of about $580 million, the fire sale of the Payline Division for only $82 million. In the acquisition, Dresser got the former Frank G. Huff plant in Libertyville, Illinois. However, the IH Melrose Park plant, where IH produced crawler tractors and engines, was not included. Without a production facility for crawler tractors, Dresser looked to Hyundai Heavy Industries of South Korea to manufacture the Dresser crawler line in the interim. Dresser purchased Hallpack in 1984 to fill the need for a heavy mining dump truck in its portfolio. The Hallpack trucks would eventually go under the Komatsu name after the Hallpack name was dropped. Before the sale of the Payline division, IH had a new large dozer on the drawing board but had no money to bring it into production. In 1985, the new TD-40 dozer was put into production under the new Dresser name. Powered by a 460 horsepower Cummins KTA 1150C, the TD-40 weighed around 140,000 pounds. With the sale of the International Harvester Agricultural Division to Tenneco in 1985, Dresser was left without a source of engines. Some of the engine designs went to Case IH, while others went to Navistar. So Dresser had to look elsewhere. The terms of this sale had restricted usage for engines. To solve this issue, Dresser turned to Cummins to power their machines. This included the B-Series and C-Series Cummins engines that were legendary for power, longevity, and reliability. In 1988, Dresser released a new rear engine crawler loader. The Dresser 200 was designed to compete with the popular new Caterpillar rear engine crawler loaders. The Dresser 200 used hydrostatic drive. Unfortunately, it did not gain popularity and was only produced for a few short years in very low numbers. In the late 1980s, Dresser's budget was getting tight and their facilities and equipment needed updating. September 1988, Dresser Industries joined Komatsu in a 50-50 joint venture in construction equipment called Komatsu Dresser. This helped Komatsu get a foothold in the North American market and gave Dresser much needed access to larger and more modern Komatsu resources. In the early 90s, Dresser started rebadging Komatsu wheel loaders as Dresser loaders. While still selling the IH designed loaders as well, Komatsu built Dresser loaders, had the cab on the rear half of the machine, while the IH designed Dresser loaders still had the cab on the front half. In 1991, the Dresser 580 bay loader was given a facelift and renamed the Hallpack 4000, and it was continued until 1996 when it was discontinued and replaced by the Komatsu WA-1200. After heavy losses in 1991, Dresser Industries reduced its interest in the Komatsu Dresser and changed its name to Indresco in 1992. Komatsu continued to sell the Dresser line in the U.S. until 1998, when it was discontinued. Huta Staloa Wola continued to produce and modernize the IH Dresser design loaders, dozers, and pipe layers under the license from Komatsu for the global market. Starting in 1999, sold under the Dresta name, Dresta meaning dress for dresser and staff for Staola Wola, Dresta eventually purchased the loader and dozer designs that traced their roots back to IH from Komatsu in 2005. In 2012, Chinese firm Lu Gong Machinery acquired Dresta and its parent company Huta Staola Wola, becoming Lu Gong Dresta Machinery. The Dresta lineup brought a larger line of machines to Lu Gong's portfolio, as well as a proven dozer line that Lu Gong was lacking. Shortly after the acquisition, Dresta dropped the smaller loader designs with the cab on the front bogey in favor of rebadged Lu Gong loaders, which used a rear bogey cab. In 2015, the 560E Extra, the final IH design loader, was dropped from the Dresta lineup. Eventually, all loaders were dropped. To this day, Lugong Dresta Machinery produces dozers and pipe layers for the world market. Based on a foundation 
of the legendary machines built and designed by the International Harvester Company. Thanks for watching.